everybody uh, to Genome Canada's Instagram Live, the Thursday segment. Um, we are talking about ruler quilting today. So um, why don't you drop me, let's see, drop me a heart if you have tried ruler quilting and drop me a flower if you have not. Um, hi, Sherlan. Oh, Saskatoon, no rain. Paul Ledger Quilt says, finally sunny. I'm glad everyone's having some decent, decent weather. So I want to see some hearts and some flowers on my feed here so that I can um, see what you guys are doing. So if you could just put that in the comment, because then I can see it. Um, the hearts and the likes. Yes, perfect, Dan Margaret. Um, the hearts and the likes, they just kind of float up. But if you can put it in the comment, then I can see. Um, if you have, um, tried ruler quilting. All right. So we got some flowers, we got some hearts. Um, so I'm really excited because ruler quilting is something that is, uh, it's been around for a little bit, a little while, but it's always changing and it's always, there's different techniques and there's different things that you can do. Ooh, I love seeing lots of flowers. This is exciting. Okay. So I want to talk about, um, a couple of supplies that are really helpful, um, Carolyn Winter, oh, the question is, uh, give me a heart if you have tried ruler quilting and a flower if you haven't. So, um, and Niagara is good, not hot, excellent. I'm so happy. I don't want to see anybody dying from heat, but, um, if you are dying from heat, then it's a great time to get inside and do some ruler quilting. Yay! Okay, so if you are taking notes, um, I'm going to give you sort of like a little shopping list to dig around in your sewing room for or to go visit your local Janome dealer because these are kind of important things for ruler quilting. So first up is a pair of free motion quilting gloves. So mine are dirty. They need a wash because they have been um, well used. Oh, Carolyn, uh, great question. What is ruler quilting? Um, so ruler quilting is a form of free motion quilting. So no feed dogs when you use a specialized foot for your sewing machine and some quilting rulers that are thicker than a rotary cutting ruler. So for example, a rotary cutting ruler is about this thick. Let's see if I can get that right. So you see how thick that is? This is a ruler quilting ruler for a domestic machine. So you see how it's a little bit thicker there? And then this is a ruler quilting ruler for a long arm machine. So if I can get these. So you see those different thicknesses? I'm trying to figure out the best way to see that. Probably just like that is good. So the different thicknesses. So the, the middle ruler is a rotary cutting ruler and the bottom one is a sewing machine free motion ruler and then the top is a long arm ruler so there's different thicknesses that you can use so today um, so you do not want to use these these are a no for ruler quilting because the reason is is that they can slip under your foot very easily and if you happen to stitch down on one of these then that would be big sad faces for your sewing machine you could really damage the inside of your machine so these are a no for ruler quilting so I'll just put that away. So these are the two ruler quilting rulers that Janome has. Um, we've got a whole set of ruler, of ruler quilting rulers. Some of them come individually and some of them are in, in a set. So we're looking at the difference in the widths here. So you can see that the long arm ruler is thicker than the domestic ruler. And that's okay. You can still use a long arm ruler on your domestic sewing machine as long as you are very careful on your placement of the ruler. And we're going to go into that when we get to do some demoing. So on the list to buy is gloves, rulers. You also are going to need a blue dot bobbin case. Um, and so this is the blue dot bobbin case. It has a little blue tab on here and because I have two blue dot bobbin cases one for my 550 and one for my m7 I put a little label on my m7 blue dot bob bobbin case co coincidentally with sparkly blue tape if you can see that and so now I know I can tell which is for which machine 
So you need a blue dot bobbin case and then you need a ruler foot. And if I, so my ruler foot is already on my machine. I think I have an extra, let me just grab it. Here's an extra one. So the ruler foot that fits on some of our machines looks like this and it's got a little lip here and it's a solidly constructed foot. So that goes onto your machine. So this is a ruler foot. And then if you don't have this foot or don't have an ability to use this foot with the ruler quilting in your sewing applications, there are two new feet available for ruler quilting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip the camera so that you can read. Yes, I will, don't worry, I will talk about a blue dot bobbin case um, in a minute. So these are feet that are new for ruler quilting for other machines. So this one is for a high speed straight stitch model. So that would be like the HD9 or the 1600P. And this one is for a low shank machine. And you see how it's got um, these two posts here and then this is where the foot attaches to the machine. And then this is the ruler foot. So for a high shank machine, it looks like this. Okay, so this is, this is usable on the S9, on the 8200, any of those machines. The 9450 and the 15000 and the M7 have a ruler foot with them, so you don't need to worry about this. But this is the convertible free motion foot set. And so what it can do is, it, so watch this part right here, is this screw moves this up or down so that you can adjust the height once it's installed on your machine to work with the rulers. The next thing that uh, you're going to need, which is something that uh, I use a lot of, is this Artistic Tac Temporary Adhesive Spray. I really like this for spray basting my quilts because it's easy to use, it doesn't stink, and it's just so handy to use. So Artistic Tac is definitely would be on my wish list for sure. And then I want to talk a little bit about um, some thread for a minute. So these two threads are from Hilo Cyrus, which is um, you can get them through your Janome dealer. And one, they are the same color, but one is a cotton quilting thread and one is a polyester sewing thread. So you can use either thread for ruler quilting. It doesn't matter which thread you are using. So you just want to have a good quality thread. And then of course, as I mentioned, rulers. And then just one other thing I want to tell you, um, this thread set is amazing. It has this cute little tin and it comes with, you get 30 spools of thread in here. So this is a great thing to try um, from your Janome dealer to try something different with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to thread up the machine and I'm going to use the polyester thread because it's brighter and you'll be able to see it better. So while I'm threading this, I want to talk about what the blue dot bobbin case is. So I'll put that right here so you can look at it. The blue dot bobbin case is a low tension bobbin case. So when we're talking about free motion quilting, we want to have lower tension in the bobbin so that we can move and do things like curves and circles, you know, feathers, swirls, anything like that without getting those little eyelashes on the back of our quilt. So that's what the blue dot bobbin case is for. And this is important and I'm going to show you why it's such a big deal because Right now I have just the regular bobbin case in my M7, my Continental M7, but I wanna show you, let's put the foot down, why it's so important. And you'll see because I'm gonna ruler quilt without it and ruler quilt with it. So the other thing that we need to do before we start is anything that's done free motion is better with the straight stitch bobbin plate. So I'm just gonna, not the bobbin plate, needle plate. So I'm just gonna, switch out the needle plates here so that I have a straight stitch in here. 
So I am all ready to go. So on the Continental M7, if I just pop you up here for a second, you can change the setting between a medium quilt sandwich and a light quilt sandwich. So I'm gonna go with a light one because my batting is 80-20 and I just have two layers of quilting cotton. So what that does is that just adjusts the tension on the inside of the machine. Uh, so you don't have to do anything. So the feed dogs are already down. And so now I'm gonna put on my gloves. And if they were like vinyl gloves, I would hear a satisfying snap as I put them on. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you some straight lines first. So when you are ruler quilting, there's a couple of things to remember that you want to bring your uh, thread up from the back. And the reason for that is it just prevents those thread nests at the back of your quilt. So I'm gonna use my needle up down button to put my needle down and then up again. And then this handy little trick, I, so I'm gonna just pop that thread up there. So this time my thread wasn't long enough to do my little trick, but next time it will be. So I've got my threads. And so I'm just going to start sewing. So I'm gonna put my foot on the pedal and I'm going to give the machine a little bit of power here and the foot's gonna drop down and it's gonna start sewing. So I am moving the fabric. And then I lift my foot. So trim my threads. Now the glove has to come off because I need a pin. Where did I stick it there? There. So I'm just gonna pull up this bobbin thread here so that then I can trim it. Okay, so when we look at the stitches here, get this out of the way. Okay. So what I've done is I've quilted this straight line with the ruler and so we cannot think that oh straight lines that's so easy but watch I'm going to do it without a ruler this time because it's always interesting to see how straight you can actually be okay so I'm gonna uh, put my needle down I'm gonna hold my thread and then put the needle up so this is that trick so I'm just gonna pop that bobbin thread up and then I'm using my thread to go under and scoop that thread so that it pulls my bobbin thread up. So that's kind of a neat little trick. Okay, so this time I'm gonna attempt to do a straight line without a ruler. And so doing a straight line is kind of like driving. You always sort of look where you wanna go. But notice, I mean, it's kind of wiggly. So if you have a ruler, definitely use a ruler. So I'm going to just bring up that bottom thread again and clip it. Okay, so when we look at the back of our quilting, for a straight stitch, We've got pretty, you know, it's pretty evenly spaced with the top thread. But so now I'm gonna do a curve so that you can see the difference with the bobbin case. So let's get a circle here. And So I'm going to use the two inch simple circle. And what is really cool about this ruler is it has like a little key that comes out so that you can slip it underneath the foot and you don't really have to worry about um, lifting your foot extra. Okay. 
So if you're just joining us, we're talking about ruler quilting. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to drop a heart if you've tried it and a flower if you haven't, just in the comments. And so now I'm going to show you the importance of a blue dot bobbin case. So I'm just going to do this circle without the blue dot bobbin case. So I'm going to start. Okay, so now I've got my circle and so now I'm going to add some little swirls in here, just free motion. So I'm going to use my little key to open my ruler. Just pop that tape down so that I can get my foot out or get the ruler out of the way because I'm just going to do some little swirls in here. So just a few little free motion swirls. Okay, so you're most likely not ever going to quilt like that. But the reason why I quilt like that is because I want to show you the difference between a blue dot bobbin case and the regular bobbin case. And of course, this would be the moment when the tweezers decide to fail me. Okay, so now do this clip that okay so now I'm going to switch the bobbin case out so to do that I'm going to lift the needle plate uh, great question how do you keep the ruler from slipping so that is when the quilting gloves come in really handy but also there when you buy the rulers in the ruler set they have these little grippies a strip of grippy stuff that comes with it and so you can put the grippy stuff on the bottom of the ruler and then if you just if that's where your fingers go as you're quilting then you can keep the ruler grip to the fabric so I'm going to switch out the bobbin case for our low tension bobbin case and then put the needle plate back and then drop my bobbin in. Okay, so we're gonna go back and do the circle again. So we're gonna start by going needle up down to get our thread up and so it's a really short tail the first time so I'm just going to use that extra high presser foot lift there. Okay so now I'm going to go around the circle and I do find that going at a faster speed is easier than trying to go at a slow speed. Uh, it's easier to maintain um, consistency with your stitches with the length so, and then we'll just move the ruler. So now I'm going to do some weird little free motion doodles in here with lots of little curves so that you can see how amazing it is. Okay. So I'm going to needle up down and then I'm going to needle up down again over here to make sure that I only have one cycle of the needle to um, lift the thread up. So I clip that and then I'll just use this to pop the thread up. If you could see my face right now, I'd have my, I have my tongue sticking out of the corner of my mouth. Okay, so when we look at the back of the quilting, okay, so this is the one done with the yellow dot bobbin case. So when we are free motion quilting, you can see how these threads are pulling up on the corners, right, where I've changed direction here. And these are what eyelashes are called. 
So that's when the top thread is, the bobbin thread is not coming out fast enough to give you good stitch quality. So this was with the regular yellow bobbin case. And so this is with the blue dot bobbin case. So you do see a little bit of my red thread, but that's because my, my thread is red and not because it's not coming out smoothly. But the curves and the stitches on the, on the curves are much better with the blue dot bobbin case. So that's why you need a blue, blue dot bobbin case. It's like a tongue twister. So let's do a little bit more ruler quilting. I wanna show you with this ruler here, this mini scallop ruler, because it has um, some great crosshatch templates um, engraved onto the plastic. So it's actually engraved in there. It's not gonna rub off, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna put my gloves back on for this one because I'm not having to make adjustments. Okay, so I want to do just a simple crosshatch. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to, I want it on a diagonal. So I'm going to start up here. And also what's really cool is if you look at this, this um, ruler, it has, if you can see that, it has a quarter inch. These markings are in quarter inch increments. Coincidentally, the distance from the needle to the edge of the foot on either side is a quarter of an inch. So you can um, use that as a guide as well. So I'm just gonna do a straight line here with my ruler. So there's my straight line, you can see. There is the straight line. And so now I'm gonna use the ruler and I wanna go over to this mark here, which is approximately an inch. So I'm just gonna put my ruler in the front there. So now I've got that. And so now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to use the markings on the ruler right here to line up with my red thread. I'm gonna see if I can get you guys just a little bit closer here so you can see better. So now I'm just going to go backwards. Okay, so you can use the markings on your ruler to do gradual lines across your project. So I'm going to line up my red stitching now with the two lines here and I'm going to go across to the next inch mark, which is here, and then I'm going to go down again. So if you were doing this actually on a quilt, you could put these, um, when you're going sideways, they could go in the ditch of your um, seams for your blocks. Okay, so now I'm ready to go in a different direction. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my fabric and I'm going to line up my lines with the lines I've already done and I'm just gonna go in the other direction. Let's go just come one more stitch. There we go. So now I'm gonna go up by an inch. And I'm gonna go back. So I'm using the reference lines on the ruler to line up with my previous lines of stitching so that I can be fairly confident that I'm straight. And then I'm gonna use my marks again to line up for an inch. So I'm going one, two, three, four over. Stopping there and then I'm gonna go back So there are lots of ways to do cross hatching. 
Um, this seems to be the method that I prefer. I go, I use this method all the time when I'm cross hatching. I, I like how it looks. And it's way faster than turning my project with a walking foot. So my cross hatching is done. I'm going to do needle up, needle down real quick just so that I can get one rotation of the needle here to pull my bobbin thread up. And then I'm gonna pull my top thread. See, in that time, the bobbin thread just worked perfectly to pop right up out of the bottom here. So now I can pull my bobbin thread. I gotta take these gloves off because my hands are hot. Okay. So, what do you think? Let's flip you around. Okay, hi again. All right, so here's our cross hatching. And look at how perfect that is. And that's just with using the markings on the ruler. Um, so this ruler that I used is the mini scallop ruler. And I really like it because you can cross hatch with it and you can have scallops as well. Um, so just in review, so this line of stitching, ruler, this line of stitching, no ruler, wonky eyes. It doesn't work. And then this top circle was using a circular ruler and then some free motion and the bottom is the same thing. So just to show the difference of when you use the blue dot bobbin case. So does anybody have any questions about ruler quilting? I'm just going to um, scroll back up. Oh, Tine Girl 2 has a question. Can I use the ruler with my Skyline 5? Yes, you can. If your machine, um, you will need to know if your machine is a low shank or a high shank. So this is just a general answer to that question. Um, you'll need to get a convertible free motion foot or the one for low shank rulers for the ruler foot. So yes, you can definitely do this with your Skyline 5. And perfect. So who's excited to try ruler quilting? We really wanna see what um, you are doing with these free tutorials on Instagram. Uh, we've put lots of effort into making sure that we're coming up with relevant content to what you are needing as a quilter and a sewist. Um, but before I let you go, um, two things. Our dealers are open. They're busy, but they're open. So please, um, if you've been doing lots of sewing and it's time for a quick checkup for your machine, don't delay in getting your machine maintained. Because maintaining your machine is just like getting an oil change in your car. It's important and it's going to make your machine last way longer. So our dealers are open, give them a call, shop online, however you feel the most comfortable. But I do want to give you a little sneaky peek at um, some online content that we're preparing. So we normally uh, revamp our education menu in the fall so that when we come and see you at the dealer stores in the fall and the spring, we have new classes. Um, to offer, but this year, since we're not visiting dealers, we are going to be doing online classes that your dealer can book and then you can sign up to attend the class and uh, learn along with us. Oh, I'm so excited you're, re you're ready to give it a try. So I'm, I will be teaching a class with Artistic Digitizer, which is our embroidery software. And so I have been working on my samples and I want to show you I want to show you this um, little napkin that I made yesterday because it's adorable. Um, sorry, just sitting down again. Look at this cute napkin. It says movie night. It's going to go with a reusable popcorn bag. And these images of the tickets and the graphics are used from the symbol library in Artistic Digitizer. And then I arranged them in a circle and then used metallic embroidery thread to do the words. So we've got tons and tons of classes coming up. We've got eco-friendly um, gifts classes. We've got classes on our serger and our cover hem. We've got quilting classes and sewing classes, just so many different things. So please, 
uh, drop your dealer an email or pop into the store next time you're close by and tell them that you want to see um, our classes you want to attend our classes um, so they better sign up. So, oh, mirror image. Okay, let me just flip the camera here. There we go. There's the napkin. So it's uh, done using the array tool inside the software and then using the symbol library and a built-in font to do the, the text. So I hope that uh, between Liz and I, we've been able to answer your questions. I hope that you're going to sign up for some of our online classes and we'll see your faces um, view, via computer screens, but we'll still get to see you and visit with you and, and see what you've been sewing. So we are so excited. Make sure you are following our uh, social media channels and I really hope to see you again soon. So we'll see you all next week. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.